Hey GED students, I had a student, Jojo, contact me on the Light and Salt Learning Facebook page and she was working on the concept of utilizing formulas from our GED math crash course and got a little stuck on some of the problems on the beginner level practice. Now, um, it's no wonder she got stuck on these particular types of problems we're looking at. It's not totally clear what to do when you look at the symbols. So let's go ahead and take a look together. Uh, number 11 says, the area of a triangle is given by the formula below. And there it is. I gave you the area of a triangle formula. Now realize that if you were taking the real test, it wouldn't be probably just there given to you. You'd probably have to go look at the GED formula sheet under the area section, look up triangle and find the formula. But since this is the beginning level practice, I just gave it to you. So there it is. And it says, what is the area? of a triangle, so what is the area? This is what they're asking me to find. Find the area, that's not known right now, it's the unknown. Uh, with a base of four feet. So I know something about my triangle. I know how long its base is, its base is four feet. And a height of six feet, its height is six feet, wonderful. Now. It's really nice when you're just utilizing formulas because what you can do is you can just plug in what you know. That's called substitution. And that's the first thing I'm gonna do. So right under underneath, you're gonna notice that I put another A here. There's a reason I put another A here. Because A, which stands for area, is the thing that I'm looking for when it's unknown. And so whenever we have an unknown in math, we use a letter. So I'm gonna have that letter A still there. And of course, I'll still have my equal sign. Now careful, you have to keep your half. A lot of students will just kind of drop numbers, but it's super important that if there's a half in the formula, you have a half when you do your substitution step. And now you're going to substitute. That means you're going to replace the letters with known values. Those variables, as we call them, are going to get traded out for what we know they're equal to. So we know here that the base is four feet. Base starts with a B. We are going to plug this in for the B base. And notice, I'm gonna plug it in with parentheses. And this, I'm guessing, Jojo, is where you were struggling because this is the common theme here. When two things are shoved together in math without anything between them, like this fraction and this variable, they're multiplying. And in algebra, we don't usually use time signs anymore to signal multiplication just because they're so easily mixed up with X's. And so what we'll do is we'll just shove those numbers real tight with parentheses between them to say they're multiplying. And now we'll do the same thing. We'll replace the H that we saw here in the formula with the height of our triangle. And it says the height, the H, is six feet. And so I'll put a six in there. And now it's super duper nice because you can just type it into your calculator. Anytime you're doing geometry, word problems, formula problems on the GED, you do get a calculator. So you can literally just type one half times four times six into your calculator if you want to. Um, but, you know, it's actually relatively easy to do this problem because it's super easy to take half of a number. Remember that multiplication is simply an act of scaling. So one way to think of half times four is half of four. Well, I know that half of four is two. So I just used up the half of four, but I haven't yet touched the times six, so I'll drop that down. And of course, two times six is 12. Now you could have typed one half times four times six in your calculator, you would have also gotten 12. And now, uh, whenever I give my final solution there, um, in geometry, I should say a unit. So I should tell you 12 what, okay? Now, my problem was in feet, four feet, six feet. So this is gonna have something to do with feet, but be careful, area is always measured in square units. And so it won't be plain old regular feet. The area will be 12 square feet, which I abbreviate like this because area is the number of square units to cover a shape. All right, so answer for number 11 then is 12 square feet. Let's look at the next one you were struggling with. Okay, next one was number 12 here and it's a really similar problem, so I'll go a little faster, but it's interesting because I have different kinds of numbers this time. So let's go ahead, let's take a look. It says the area of a triangle is given by the formula below and sure enough, there we see that exact same formula. A equals one half BH or one half times base times height. 
And then what is the area? So area is my unknown. I'll leave it as a letter A of a triangle with a base B of 2.4. Okay, so where I see B, I'll put in a 2.4. So let me make sure I keep my one half. I'll put in 2.4 in parentheses. And then a height of 3.7. Again, that B and that H are shoved together, so they're multiplying. So I'll put my 3.7 height there also in parentheses. And now those three things are multiplying together. Now, you can type, again, this one's not as easy to take half of. Like, I can take half of this decimal 2.4, but a lot of students would probably struggle with that. So if that's you, let's just type this thing into our calculator, and I'm going to give you a lazy trick. You can, any time in math two things are the same, you can trade them out for each other. So I don't like typing fractions in my TI. I mean, I can. It's just kind of clunky because you have to use the fraction buttons, and it's confusing if you're not in the right mode. So a nice little trick is anytime uh, you see the fraction one half, if you know it, you can use the decimal version of one half. One half is the same as 0.5. Like, you know, half of a dollar would be 50 cents. Um, and so you could just replace that one half with 0.5 and then uh, type that times 2.4 times 3.7 in your calculator. And that's super easy to type. So I think I'll do it that lazy girl way. And mathematicians do that all the time. We trade out one form of a number for an easier form. And I get 4.44. And 4.44 what? Well, again, my problem was in centimeters, but I'm looking at area here, and area is always measured in square units. And so my answer is not going to be in regular centimeters. It's going to be in square centimeters, which I abbreviate by putting a little floating two. And by the way, that's not math to do. It's just an abbreviation for square centimeters. Wonderful. And so there is my answer for that one, 4.44 square centimeters. Okay, let's go on to the last one. Oh, Jojo, no wonder you were struggling on 18. 18 is one of those problems that give most GED students the sweats. Look at it. We got an algebra, little word problem. We got um, fractions. We got a decimal all in one problem. Looks petrifying. But remember, you're... GED calculator can totally handle the nasty calculations. All you have to be able to do is the algebra. So you just have to be able to trade out the letter for the number. I mean, that's it. Once you trade it out, then you'll know what to do and your calculator will do it. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, the total cost of a purchase is computed using the formula given below. So um, I should kind of break this formula down a little bit. This is not how this formula looks like on the GED for some reason. This is like the one formula where they uh, um, sorry, this is like the one formula where they spell it out. So I think on the GED, it literally says total cost is equal to number of items times price per item. They don't abbreviate, uh, but I was too lazy to spell. That's mathematicians through and through. So that's what this means. The cost per item, or I should I'm sorry, the total cost is equal to the number of items times the price per item. Okay, now that we know that, let's see what we need to do here, okay? So it says find the total cost. So C is what we're finding, so it will remain a C. Um, and the number of items we're going to buy, well, we're going to buy three and a half pounds of roast beef. So how many items are we buying? We're buying three and a half. So I'm going to plug three and a half in for N. And then P is my price per pound or my price per item. I can see that it costs me $7.99 per pound. Again, these two things are shoved together. They're multiplying. And so I'll put $7.99 in parentheses. Okay. Now, what might have scared you then is not that part, but what might have scared you is to type this into your calculator. Um, again, I could use a decimal trick. I could do this various ways, but I'm just going to show you how to type this into your calculator. Okay, ready? First thing I like to do is when I'm typing fractions in a TI, they look really weird um, in classic mode, but they look really nice the way you'd expect them to look in math print mode. And so just for my student's sanity and my own, I prefer to do fractions in math print mode. So here's how we'll do that. You hit the mode button. 
you use the big arrow key up on the top right hand side to arrow over the word math print until it's blinking black. Then you press enter to select. Oh, I should write that down, math print. Then you press enter to select, then clear to get out of the screen. Enter, clear. Okay, and now you're ready to type a fraction. So here it goes, now that I'm in the right mode. You are gonna need to hit the green button. It says second on it, but it is the green button. And the reason why we need to hit that button is because we wanna use one of the green functions. What we want is the U, N over D, that's how you get a mixed number and how you get it is by hitting of course that green button second and then that n over d key so second n over d and you'll see three boxes if you're in the right mode so that you can type into those boxes so i'll type a three into that whole number box and then i'll arrow I'll use that arrow key again to arrow up to type in one arrow down to type in the two and then arrow one more time to the right before you open up a parentheses and times it by 799. And I get this weird number, 27.965. Now, as usual, I'm not done until I know what this unit is, but this one's different. It's not geometry. Let's think about what this is. We were finding the total cost. Remember we said C stood for total cost. So this answer that we got here is the total cost. And this number looks really weird to me for a cost. Okay, you guys, why? Because it has too many decimals. You know, we don't think about money this way. This is a money. Cost is dollars, right? We don't think about money this way um, because in, at least in the United States, our money system only goes to two decimal places. And so it's really important. Don't move your decimal. Instead, you need to have your rounding skills. So I only want two decimals. So I'm going to round after that hundredths place, after two decimals. Now, of course, that number I'm about to throw away, that five is big enough to matter. And so this number will ro round up. So we're looking at about $27.97, not 96. And that would be the total cost of purchasing my roast beef. All right. I uh, hope that helped Jojo. If you or anybody out there watching this video has any other questions, be sure to drop them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them.